Today, we'll be talking about the importance of teaching our children about halal income. Why should we teach our children about halal income? Well, if we look at the types of decisions that are made from primary school onwards and through the education system, what they in want to do when they grow up is the foundation of their lives and lifestyle in the future. So first and foremost, let's look at why. Let's look at the intention. What is the importance of a halal income? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in verse 4, O oh, you who have believed, do not consume one another's wealth unjustly, but only in lawful business by mutual consent. This is not the only reminder that we have in the Quran. In the second verse of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, and do not consume one another's wealth unjustly or send it in bribery to the rulers so that they might aid you to consume a portion of the wealth of the people in sin while you know it is unlawful. And the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, also gave us several reminders, including this hadith. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, Allah is pure and he only accepts that which is pure. And Allah has commanded the believers to do that which he commanded the messengers. And the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, O people, eat from the land and from that which grows from the earth and do not follow in the footsteps of Satan. Indeed, he is to you a clear enemy. So we see here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have taught us the importance of earning the pure, earning the halal, spending in a halal way, only spending in a halal way, avoiding haram transactions, so we're going to go into the reasons why we would want to make sure that our children firstly understand what is halal and haram when it comes to income. The scholars mention that there are three benefits to a halal income. Number one, earning Allah's pleasure. This is an act of worship. When we choose to earn halal over haram, this is something inshallah that is written for us and that we are rewarded for. Second, avoiding his punishment avoiding his wrath, avoiding his displeasure, and inshallah protecting ourselves and our families from the anger of Allah. And then third, a halal income is a means of peace and contentment because we know in our hearts that we are doing the right thing and that everything that we spend from that income is blessed inshallah and allows us to experience the barakah. I would like to remind every parent watching this that Teaching your child about halal income is your responsibility. As I've said before, the schools will not teach them. The banks will not teach them. And likely the society around will not teach them. The earlier you are, your children understand the difference between halal and haram when it comes to income, the better. And it allows you to institute the balance in their understanding about wealth, about money and about risk. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Allah has made the sale of goods lawful and he has made usury, riba, unlawful. Therefore, whoever receives an amount of money over what he paid, it is not permissible for him to take it and it is not permissible for him to give it to someone else. And whoever gives it, he is sinning. And it is not permissible for the recipient to take it. This is in Sahih al-Bukhari. So there is a balance there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed a plethora of activities for trade, a plethora of ways to make money, to gain wealth, to preserve wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the world halal for us, except for a handful of things. So we want our children to know what those handful of things are. So let's talk practically. Let's get our children understanding about risk in general and halal income in particular. Now, in order to have these conversations, it is helpful to do three things. Again, get clear on your intention so that your conversations will be blessed and be written for you as an act of ibadah. Then I invite you to embrace curiosity to find out what your children already know. And then relax, relax and be open to a conversation that doesn't include right and wrong, no pressure. 
We just want to find out what our children already know, what they've heard, what they've seen, and what they don't know yet. And Nu'man ibn Bashir reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, the lawful is clear and the unlawful is clear. Again, the balance. And between the two of them are doubtful matters about which many people do not know. Thus, he who avoids doubtful matters clears himself in regard to his religion and his honor. And he who falls into doubtful matters will fall into the unlawful. So this hadith reminds us of the importance of knowing what's what, being clear on what's clearly halal of the many things and what is clearly haram. But you may be asking, what makes an income haram? It's time to discuss the different things that can make a particular source of income haram and explore this with your children. So here are some topics to explore, some areas to look into. Is the income from forbidden sources like riba, interest, theft, bribery, murder, drugs, the earnings that are sourced from impermissible avenues like the selling of haram substances, alcohol, tobacco, etc.? Is it an impermissible product, for example, like pork or alcohol, even if it was bought with halal wealth? Or did we buy it from haram? Did we give it in a haram way? All of these things, including how the income was made, whether it impacted your deen, whether it allowed you to practice, whether it compromised an aspect of your Islam, all of these can actually make income haram. So these are really, really important things to get clear right from the start. So here's an idea for a game that you can play with your children. Make a list of all the different jobs and careers you can think of, all of them. You think of some, your spouse think of some, all of the children think of some, and don't stop until you can't think of any more. And then try to sort through them to see if they fulfill the criteria. See which of them your children can immediately see, oh no, that would be haram because Allah says this, or because it involves this. Again, you're gauging to see what they already know in order to be able to guide them better. So. Start sorting through them. Which ones are clearly haram? Which ones are clearly halal? And then which ones would you maybe need to do a little bit of research about? Which ones could be halal conditionally or haram conditionally? Encourage your children, especially as they grow, especially as they start to go into high school, encourage them to think about their own vision for their lives, for their future, financial and otherwise. What halal paths can they create to get them closer to that goal? It's for us to encourage our children to consider the options that are available to them when it comes to family, when it comes to location, when it comes to career, profession, or anything else. And get them thinking, get them actively pursuing a halal path towards the future that they envisage, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our families in every way and guide us to the very best and the most halal and blessed income possible. Ameen. And before I leave, just a quick reminder to look out for our children's activity workbook on raising financially literate children, available for you to download from the Muslim Money Experts website soon.